Assalamualaikum. Welcome to this video tutorial on simplifying Java for OOP1 students of King Faisal University and for others who want to learn Java. This is part 24 in this series and is entitled Multi-Threading in Java. A thread is synonymous to a process. Analogously, if multiprocessing means many processes occurring at the same time, multi-threading means many threads simultaneously running at the same time. And because they run simultaneously or concurrently, they have different paths of execution. Some things to remember about threads are 1. Every Java program has at least one thread, the main thread, or what we know as the main method. 2. Thread can be created by implementing the runnable interface or extending the thread class. In this tutorial, we will create one by extending the thread class. 3. A thread begins when another thread calls the start method. And 4. Once started, a thread becomes runnable through the runnable object that can be overridden through the run method. This means that we have to change the definition of the run method that we inherited from the super thread class. Threads can be simple and risky at some points. That's why programmers should be careful in assuring that threads don't interfere with each other. In activity number 45, we will create a Java project called Two Threads that extends the thread class. We will override the run method by displaying the integers 1 to 1 million. And we're going to instantiate the Two Threads class in the main method and start it. We will use try catch to put thread class to sleep for 5 seconds, which is equivalent to 5,000 milliseconds. We will also create a Boolean variable finished to know that the timer has already expired. Once finished, the printing of numbers in the run method should stop even if it hasn't reached 1 million yet. This means that the first thread in this project counts and prints the numbers from 1 to 1 million, while the other thread counts or slips for 5 seconds and then stops or wakes up. After it wakes up, the first thread should stop as well even if it hasn't reached a million yet. We will consider our input as the numbers 1 to 1 million. Our output will be the numbers that can be printed for 5 seconds. So our class 2 threads will extend the thread class. We will override the run method by creating a loop from 1 to 1 million and will print every value. We will then instantiate two threads and start it. Using try catch, we will command the parent class thread to sleep for 5 seconds. Its equivalent is 5000 milliseconds. Afterwards, we can determine if it is already finished sleeping by creating a variable finished that should be initially be false. If it's true, printing of the number should stop. We can set this value to true right after the try catch blocks. We will call this project two threads. We will extend the thread class and create a variable called uh, finished which is boolean and we will initialize it to false we will then override the method run we will simply display the, var the values 1 to 1 million so we'll start with 1 and the condition is while x is less than 1 million and the increment is by plus plus we know that if it's finished that's after 5 seconds we should stop this otherwise we should continue printing the value Okay, we have overridden that method. Now let's go to the main method. We're going to instantiate this class, two threads. We'll call it sample. So we'll call to new two threads. And we'll start it. Okay. So now we were able to start a thread. And the other thread, we will put to sleep for 5 seconds. That's 5,000 milliseconds. 
we need the catch otherwise uh, there will be error in our code and after that sleep for five seconds we will set the finished variable to true okay that's it now let's try to run our program it's now printing the values and inshallah after five seconds there it is after five seconds it stopped at 159,574 let's try to run it again after five seconds the first one was 159,574 this time it's 173,514 Take note that it is possible that this number will change every time we run it. Well, congratulations, you've just done a simple application of Threads in Java. For activity number 46, we will create a Java project called Multi-Threads that has two other classes, uh, Count Up and Countdown, that both extend the thread class. We will override their run methods by counting up 1 to 1 million and counting down 1 million to 1. We will instantiate the two subclasses in multi-thread class and start both. We will use try catch to put thread class to sleep for five seconds. Both subclasses should have finished Boolean variable to know that the timer has already expired. Once finished, the printing of numbers in the two run method should stop. Our inputs will be counters from one to one million and a million to one. Our output will be the numbers that the processor can count from this ranges. Our process requires two subclasses that both extend the thread class with counters 1 to 1 million and 1 million to 1 for count up and count down respectively. These subclasses are instantiated and started in multi-thread class. We'll call this project multi-threads. Let's first create our two subclasses. Right-click the package, new Java class. Uh, the first subclass is called count up to count from one to a million. Of course, this class extends the thread class. Same as in the other activity, we have to declare a boolean variable called a finished, which will initially be false. Then we have to override the run method from the runnable object again we'll simply print the values from 1 to 1 million the increment is plus plus this will terminate if finish is already true Otherwise, we will continue displaying the numbers. Uh, to distinguish if it's uh, in count up or in count down, we will put uh, this word count up and also the same later for count down and then the value. Okay, so since uh, count down should also be almost the same as this one, we will just copy it. So right click count up, copy right click the package multi-threads and then paste it refactory copy we'll name it countdown and click refactor okay so we now have this countdown class that also extends thread with the same finished uh, variable with its own finished variable but this time x will start with 1 million and our condition is that we will do this while x is greater than 0 and it's no longer increment for x x but for x but a decrement and to know that it is a counting down we will put the word down okay now we have our two classes that extends the thread class we'll go back to the multi-thread class now where we are going to instantiate both subclasses. Let's start with count up. Let's call the instantiated object up is equal to new count up and count down. 
let's call the object down is equal to new count down let's start both up that start and down that start also then we'll we'll command the thread to sleep for five seconds <laughs> only for five seconds so the thread sleep for 5000 milliseconds and then we'll put the catch um, of course our exception e will not do anything for that and once it's awakened we have to set the variable finish to true and the down dot finished also to true okay that's it let's let's try to run our program you can see that count up and then count down and then count up and then count down that's because of the thread because they are being run simultaneously okay let's look at the output again this count down then count up so it now depends on the processor because they are running simultaneously uh, if you notice even if we started with up it didn't matter it still started with countdown because now they are running simultaneously or concurrently it's count up and then there's countdown and then count up and then count down okay very good well then guys we've uh, just finished demonstrating multi-threading in java Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Ma salama.